I haven't noticed the idle hang on this thing. Uh, I'll know when I get down on the surface streets down here. It's yep, it's hanging. I'm fighting it. See, I'm driving forward. When I let off the brake, it's maintaining a speed, and it shouldn't be. It should be decelerating. Yeah, idle is definitely hanging high. It's about 5%. Happy Wednesday to you all. It's uh, August 9th. Almost 90 degrees at 9 a.m. or 9.15, whatever it is. Headed out for another sweat. My dehydration diet is not working that well. I haven't lost much weight. I guess I'm offsetting it with too much beer. <laughs> I'm late for work, as usual. Uh, I keep getting stuck in these uh, morning troubleshooting sessions and calls and... Uh, I'm almost an hour late for uh, any pre-existing appointment now. Yikes. But, on a positive note, uh, I do have a fresh helmet on my head. Ah, oh, the smell of detergent. A whole lot better than the smell of a stinky shoe that I had the last several days. Man, sweating like this in this uh, heat is stinking up my helmet fast. I usually get three or four weeks. Oh yeah, don't bother looking, just step right out into traffic. Uh, <laughs> uh, I usually get you know a month or more uh, out of my helmet before I really need to wash it up. But, woo, man, it's been hot in Houston. I haven't changed my routine as far as the cleaning. I still do the same thing I always do. It's just not lasting as long. I might need to replace the uh, the headliner and the cheek pads in this uh, Shoei Neotech 2 sometime in the near future. Uh, it's two years old now, I guess, something like that. I don't know how many times it's been washed. Probably headliner's been out of there a dozen times or more, about a dozen times, I guess. Uh, the uh, cheek liners have been out less frequent. Uh, I don't like taking the cheek liners out because they tend to, uh, I don't know, in most of my other helmets, the snaps have gone bad on them or whatever, you know, they just tend to deteriorate quicker if you're uh, in and out of there a lot. But I haven't priced the components for this one yet. I don't know how expensive it's going to be. I know that Schuberth was pricey. Ooh, man. The one that I rode with for several years, uh, my primary helmet anyway face shields on that thing were 100 bucks pop or more same as they are with this uh, let me see the crown liner was 70 or 80 bucks uh, cheek pads were a similar price a set of them anyway it was a fairly expensive helmet to maintain I'm sure over the three or four years that I rode with that one as my primary lid I probably doubled the cost of that helmet. Well, if I include face shields, I over doubled it. Ah! Quiet moment in my head. Uh, Christian Brothers Automotive. The uh, owner reached out to me. Uh, he's reached out to me several times and I've just been ignoring the calls. So I'll be very upfront about that. I've, I've mentioned that before. Um, but uh, he they apparently did find the, uh, <laughs> the video on YouTube. Uh, because he reached out to me and said, uh, you know, we, we tried contacting you by phone and we haven't had any luck. Uh, so we hope this email reaches you. So they really do want to make amends on that, which is nice. Let's see if I can zip up this jacket, no hander. Oh, oh. Ah, he got it. Uh, man, the wind is ripping. So they want to they want to make amends apparently the uh person or persons that were involved in that uh overcharging and uh not doing the work uh bit have been terminated at least according to the email that i received so i don't know i might reach out to them and just you know at least bury the hatchet and say thanks for the follow-ups i appreciate it whether i have them do the work on the truck or not i don't know and they're offering to do the work for free, but I don't know what work they're talking about. I don't know if they 
they want to be out of pocket on uh, parts costs or not for uh, doing the manifold or whatever, or if they're just talking about doing the oil change and the coolant flush. Oil change, fine, whatever. Coolant flush isn't going to make any sense unless I fix the coolant leak, so I don't know. I might reach out to him, see what he's got in mind. I don't want to take advantage and get the work done for free. That makes me feel funny, you know. Wouldn't have a clear conscience that way. I'll at least, at the very least, uh, reach out and just bury the hatchet and say, you know, thanks for the follow-ups. I appreciate you returning my money. It sucked that it uh, wasted a day of my life and uh, got you some bad publicity, but at least the bad actor is out of the picture. Ooh, it's going to be a hot one today. Temperature was high 80s, like 88, 89 when I left my house. Heat index, I'm sure, is already near 100. Uh, we're headed for a high of 101 or 102 today. Still no rain in the forecast, even though these uh, clouds are nice. Ah, oh, there's a rainbow coming out of the edge of that cloud. I can't look at it. Have you guys ever seen the pictures of those, uh, I think it's pronounced pilus, pilus, pilus clouds? They're like round donut stack. They almost look like a, a stack of shaving cream or whatever. But as the sun comes through them, it's like this huge rainbow. The whole cloud turns into a rainbow. That's amazing. I had never seen that before until all the pictures started circulating on uh, Instagram and stuff like that. It's pretty crazy. So I'm getting geared up for the Quasi Saturday Night Live this weekend. Uh, if I was wishy-washy on it before, now I need to make decisions and get it done. Uh, Kevin Excelsior here on YouTube, uh, Bikes and Pizza on Instagram. Uh, Kevin is headed down Saturday, it looks like. He wants to ride his uh, ADV 150 down. Hopefully the heat and the weather plays fair with him. Uh, but he wants to come down for the live stream and he might be doing some uh, scooter maintenance maybe the valve check and definitely a belt replacement uh, when he's down at my place on saturday so that'll be cool maybe we can do that uh, for one of the topics or subjects in the live stream this weekend sit outside and wrench oh well, we could bring the scooter inside and do it i don't care we'll put it in my uh, theater room in the front uh, put a drop cloth down and work in the air conditioning with some lights and some air conditioning and some air conditioning did I mention air conditioning we could have some air conditioning yeah that's a plan I think we'll just pull it inside the house I haven't had a chance to figure out a raffle or whatever for my uh, big giveaway that I was talking about it's a small giveaway but big pricey I'd like to not take a bath on that as far as the, the cost of it. I'd much rather raffle it off, but I don't know the rules on YouTube for that. I know you can't do uh, raffles, so I would have to raffle through a different platform and then just, you know, show the, the giveaway on YouTube. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I might hold off on that one for another couple of weeks or a month or something like that. Uh, it's so nice to be in a clean helmet again. The smell of OxyClean. I haven't noticed the idle hang on this thing. Uh, I'll know when I get down on the surface streets down here if it's still doing it or, you know, at this temperature or if it seems to be more... Uh, the guy's on his phone weaving around. Dick, um, I'll see if it's a temperature issue. It seems to be more temperature related because... I always notice it when it's stupid, sweltering, stinking hot outside. I don't notice it so much when the temperatures are below, say, you know, 90. But in the afternoons in this heat, I, I always notice that the it feels like the throttle is hanging open a bit. So I would think that that has to be something with throttle position sensor or potentially uh, like a MAF, a MAF or MAF sensor, something like that because this is throttle by wire and when the throttle is totally closed you know this is just a potentiometer or 
you know, some fancy derivation thereof, like a uh, encoder or Hall effect sensor of some kind. Anyway, uh, the the clutch isn't engaged when you're sitting still, so and it's not dragging you forward. So it's not like this thing is what's off. It's got to be something down on the motor. It's got to be uh, you know throttle body or something else that's causing it to hold open just a tiny bit. As far as the computer concerned, you're okay on the throttle side, but it's not letting that idle drop. Speaking of, these people are idling. Move it, break it up. I need in there. Yep, it's hanging. I'm fighting it. See, I'm driving forward. When I let off the brake, it's maintaining a speed, and it shouldn't be. It should be decelerating. All right, so this thing's going to have to go to the shop, too. I'm not having any luck this year with uh, cagers or uh, machines, huh? <laughs> God, I can't figure out a lane, either. Bump. Ugh. Yeah, so this thing needs a throttle position reset or something. I didn't have time to look that up last night. I need to do that. I might be able to handle it myself. But this thing's got an extended warranty for, what, five, six years, whatever. So uh, I'll probably just take it into the dealer. That way it's on the warranty card. and They know that it is a pre-existing condition. Anywho, I'll shut it down now, and I will catch you guys uh, for the uh, afternoon commute. I'm going to be ping-ponging back to my side of town in just like an hour and a half. All right, so back on the road, ping-pong balling around the city of Houston. The temperature's not bad so far today cloud cover here I guess it's keeping the temps down because it is not shabby at all right now feels kind of good oh man normally I'm not one to wish for rain especially when I'm uh, commuting by a motorcycle but I tell you we need some rain here in Houston no two ways about it Idle is definitely hanging high. It's about 5%. Should I steal my... No, I'm not stealing my normal spot. Dang it. They're working in there. Sure would love to have my spot in the shade. So I guess I take a whole parking spot today. And it is going to bake in the sun. Okay. Oh. It is what it is. Take my laptop in and uh, get to work. All right, everybody. Finishing up for the day. It's about three something now. I don't know what time. Uh, I am headed uh, back home, but I think on the way, I'm going to stop over here at Wild West and uh, inquire about their service schedule, see when they might have time to fit me in. Oh, see, I went and locked my column and forgot about it. <laughs> At least I didn't try to take off forward. I did that once, and it uh, just about made me drop the bike. I leaned it up off the center stand. I was parked near a wall, so I just leaned it up, and I went to, to go, <laughs> and as soon as I tried to straighten the handlebars, uh, couldn't, whoopsie, just about dropped it. Anyway, uh, I'll see when they can get me in on their uh, service schedule because uh, I'd like to get this idle hang issue sorted sooner rather than later. Hopefully, they wouldn't need it more than you know, a few hours or something like that, so I might be able to just 
and wait for it. I don't know. We'll see. Wild West Motoplex. Haven't been here in a while. It's been a couple months, I think. At least. Yeah, it's been a couple months. It's since before I left for Cannonball, for sure. So, yeah. Stop over here. <laughs> hey, somebody's got him a monkey. Uh, yeah. Chat with the boys real quick. Ah, oh, man, I've never seen it this empty over here. It's always got bikes sitting out there. All right. I'm going to check their service schedule and see if uh, I can get this thing remedied soon. Ugh. Man, I've never seen the service area so empty. It's crazy. Even back here is pretty empty. How goes it, man? You got bikes hiding in here, too. All right, everybody. So, uh, their service schedule is, like, dead, non-existent right now because of the heat. Uh, and also, because it's the end of the summer, they are, uh, you know, seeing the normal seasonal lull right before school starts. So, he said uh, their service queue is completely open. So, I decided to leave my Rebel here for a day or two or whatever they need uh, and they're going to open a case with Honda and see if they can figure out what is going on with the hanging idol on it uh, and I was trying to describe it to Patrick and he's like uh, I don't follow and I said well remember this is DCT and it's throttle by wire and somehow the throttle is just hanging a bit it's uh, it's not shutting itself down completely so anyway I said the best time to do it is to go ride it right now while it's hot out there in the heat. You take it around for a three mile loop and you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, so that's what they're doing. <laughs> they're going to figure it out. And if it's a, a recall or a warrantable item, then uh, it's no cost out of my pocket. If uh, they can't figure it out, then I'm just going to pay them a diagnostic fee and keep suffering with it until it becomes more of an issue. But it's definitely hanging open. This, uh, it's not slowing down. I have to fight it with the brakes to get stopped. And I'm liking these. That's a really high seat, though. Hmm. Slick. DSR. Cool. This is nice looking. This is, uh, this is very Aprilia looking. I like it. I don't think I like the price tag, though. I'm sure it's going to be 20000 and change. Probably twenty three. And they don't put a sticker on it because it's that expensive. <laughs> no, don't put a tag on it. You'll scare everybody away. It's nice though. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go. Three thousand off or zero financing. Hmm. They have trouble moving these because they are expensive. Looks like fun though. And of course, here's the fifteen thousand dollar BMW scooter very heavy minimal range it's like a hundred mile range or something like that what's the sticker yeah 14795 I'll take a quick walk through the uh, showroom here with my helmet on looking like a dweeb and uh, I might even do a live stream because I'm waiting for my son to come get me uh, I'll just hang out a little while manager special 22 KTM 390 adventure Six thousand. Hmm. Huh. It's new. It's a thousand bucks off. It's new. There's no miles on this. I thought maybe it was a used one. No, she brand new. Hmm. That could be fun. It's a little bit of a tall seat for me, but I could always drop the suspension a bit. Yeah, it's tall. Woohoo! I'm tiptoe on one foot. Other foot's dangling in midair. I wonder what the seat height is. Probably 33, 34 inches at least. Looks like fun though. Lightweight. Oh, there's a little lonely metropolitan in the corner. Fit to 399. 390 Duke. Got the big bikes. A lot of KTMs. I don't know, I've still been thinking about uh, uh, 890 Adventure. I, I had the first 790 waiting for me when they were released, but I was hearing a lot of problems with the transmissions and clutches on them so I decided to stay away from it and I haven't gone back that route yet. Two thousand bucks off. Nice. 
I saw some other tasties over here that looked interesting. Of course, we got a Navi and a Grom. Navi, 1807 MSRP. I don't know what the fees are going to be on it. 23 Grom, 3499. Got a monkey hiding back there with a cool seat. What's up with that? <laughs> Eliminator ABS. Brand new one. It's different looking. Is that a custom seat? It's got to be a custom seat. They don't come from Honda like that, do they? Or do they? Is that just my ineptitude? My uneducatedness? I didn't realize they came with a plaid, tartan, whatever that uh, pattern is. It's just a, a print. It's not like cloth. It's vinyl. Anyway, this is interesting looking. Oh my god, it's so light! Holy, where's the engine? Did they forget to put an engine in this thing? Oh my god, this thing is so light! What is going on? What is this? It's gotta be like a 650, right? 24 Kawasaki Eliminator. Eliminator what? It's twin, so I'm betting it's the 650 or something. Oh my god, I actually like this, guys. This is crazy. I don't need another cruiser. But that thing makes my Rebel feel like a pig. This is so unbelievably light. I can't describe it on video. Wow, it feels like a 300. Man, that's got to be 150 pounds lighter than my Rebel. Hmm. What else? I saw something else that looked interesting. What was it? What was it? Oh, it was over there. MT-10, yeah, no, don't need it, here's the, uh, hey, here's the Birch Mobile, <laughs> Life of Birch, uh, uh, he got one of these in uh, orange, SCL 500, I've had several people asking me what I think of these, I'm undecided, I haven't ridden it yet, ooh, ADV-160, we're going to look at that in a second, um, I don't like the, th the fact that they built it off of the Rebel frame, uh, I wish they had made a more bespoke frame for it. Uh, the wheels, meh, that's my biggest hitching point. Uh, I'm not a fan of the uh, giant exhaust. And I just think that it would have too many drawbacks as a scrambler. I could be wrong. I haven't ridden it. I haven't even sat on it yet. And I'm trying not to scratch it. Don't want to scratch it. Don't want to scratch anybody. Boy, they got these things packed in here like sardines. Okay, so throw a leg over it see what I think oh it feels pretty good I just want to hit anything oh yeah the seating position is not bad it's a little tall for me because I'm you know shorty but I'm easily I'm almost flat-footed on one side so seating position is pretty good actually a whole lot better than the rebel because it's more level you're not you know cranked back uh, I don't know it, this could be an interesting machine but my my real problem with Honda branding this as a quote-unquote scrambler is it's got cast wheels. Come on, man. And it's a bit heavy for a scrambler. But uh, if they wanted it to be off-road capable, have some real off-road chops to it, they needed to put spoke wheels on this. A little bit of uh, off-road credibility. I like it, though. I actually do like it. It's In my mind, this is more of a naked than a scrambler. It, it doesn't really fit scrambler. The only thing that makes it scrambler is that high-swept exhaust which I would probably nix anyway. I'd probably put a, a low-slung exhaust over here, like a Kaufman Shorty or something like that, and just make a straight, uh, you know, naked, classic retro out of it. $67.99, not bad. Okay, continuing on. I still like these little CB300Rs. I really like them. That MT-03 is looking kind of spicy. What else? That 300R, 5049. What was this? 5149. This must be the ABS. No, that's 24. What I want, and I've been seriously, seriously considering it, and this is the ABS. Uh, I want it in that yellow. I like that uh, that pearl yellow. It looks really good. I don't want another black bike. Yab. Y-A-B-B. -B, yet another black bike. Okay. Anywho, if they had the yellow one in here, I might seriously consider taking one home today. But here's the ADV-160, and uh, right next to a PCX-160. Huh. So let me throw a leg over this and see what the uh, 
ergonomic differences, oh yeah, it is narrower and a little bit lower than the ADV-150. Cool. And that brake feels like crap. It needs adjusted. Um, I'd love to turn it on and see what this new display looks like because the old display I wasn't a fan of. Not at all. It's too busy. Hmm. Cool. I like this. What's the price? $44.99. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Now, if it were the ADV350, I would uh, trade the Rebel right now. Not saying anything against the Rebel. I just really want the ADV350. Okay. We'll continue my walk forward and around, and uh, I might do a, a quick live stream. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Another Grom. I still might add a Grom to the stable one of these days. Everybody always asks me, why don't you have a Grom? Why don't you have a Grom? You got the other mini motos, why don't you get a Grom? I don't know. If I were to go Grom, I don't know if I would have to think real hard and choose between Grom and Monkey. Hmm. Okay. Still thinking. Still thinking. That one looks good. Yeah, there you go, Birch. Here's a Grom for you. In your favorite color. And then, of course, uh, I, I don't like this. I, I, I'm all for getting new color bikes uh, in the U.S., you know, different colors than our standards. But purple? Mm, I don't know. I'm not a purple guy. Good looking bike, minus the color. Blue one looks much better. Okay, that's just me, though. How much do they want for this big old hog? Ooh, well that's 15k miles. It's used. All right, take a look over here at the Bimmers, and then I'm taking my helmet off because it's getting hot. Nothing on sale, but uh, they all look good. That's good looking. I like the color scheme on this. That's a very good looking bike. G310. Uh, sticker says 5785. No uh, discounts or anything. Hmm. It's good looking. And that's real good looking. Oh, that'll be 20. Yep, 15595. Hmm. I was really hoping they were going to have a uh, XR150L here in the showroom, but they do not. They do not. They do have an interesting looking little KLX 230S here. Uh, that's, uh, that's a good looking machine. Because can't pass up the Super Cub. Wait, 23 Super Cub, 3849. I didn't like the pictures of this color uh, online, but in person it looks really good. It's, uh, it's an interesting color of almost like a cornflower blue and a gray mixed together. It's pretty good looking. Okay. Helmet off. Oh, wait, no. Show you this one. This KLX 230. This is nice. Sat on it and messed around with it a minute ago. I don't know how it compares to the XT 250 Yamaha, but uh, obviously this one will be fuel injecticated. I'm looking. I'm looking. I don't see a carburetor in there. I see a throttle body. Yeah, it's fuel injected. High pressure line there. Cool. Anyway, all right, helmet off. <laughs>